the Galapagos. Eddie, tell us. What was the standout moment for you there? Oh, there were many. But you know what was important is that the world has the ability to identify one place where culture and, if you like, wildlife uh, are sacrosanct, that they are treasured and they are safeguarded. And that's what Galapagos do. I remember diving with you and, and, and seeing how the sea lions boss the sharks yes. and, and then, you know, the pelican, every kind of species that you can imagine all swimming around going crazy. Obviously we had to go hiking with Marie and with her cameras and stuff and all of those booby birds with the ones with the with the blue feet yeah i'll never right. forget them if i never see another one of them i won't be upset but yeah. anyway um there's a lot of them well there's a lot of them <laughs> god they were a lot of them but it, it, it was so rugged so natural and everyone seemed to be at peace with themselves and peace with the world uh and I'm not sure you can say an awful lot about that these days um but that's what Galapagos did. It gave you the opportunity to live and to touch and to feel and to cherish nature. So we head off across the Pacific, uh, the longest leg on the rally, so it was about 18 days at sea. Uh, it was an incredible trip and we arrive in the Marquesas and you guys, you jump on board and we were straight off to Rangiroa, the Tuamoto. Do you remember that Eddie? Yeah, but Rangi Roa was probably number one in my recall rate of what everything that the rally was about. And Rangi Roa is the biggest atoll in the world, so we went through this tiny uh, entry and it was like a man-made harbour, but it was huge. Yeah. And of course, the sea could be rough outside, which it wasn't generally, but this was flat calm. Yeah. Do you remember what we found in the Blue Lagoon? But I mean... Remember? You, when you tell people like that, they can't. Yeah. They can't quite fathom that you're you're swimming with forty, fifty, up to a hundred sharks. That's right. But they're not the big sharks that were, you know, the great whites. Nothing yeah. like that. But generally speaking, of all of the species that there is in the shark family, there's only one or two that are perhaps dangerous. The rest yeah. of them are just yeah. docile and really nice. And, and these were were the blue tip. They ones. were black tip reef sharks. Mm -hmm. They would just nibble at your skin. I know, they it were was actually amazing. really kind of <laughs> initially you say, Oh my god. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then you realise that they're like pets. They were fantastic. And they were about, about that the they were diddy sharks. They were, they were like the size of a half decent salmon. Yeah, exactly. And it is kind of like that it was a shark nursery and then so the sharks they would grow up there but with their parents. They weren't and confined, they, the they were free to move yeah, around, totally. but they just uh, congregated in this area. Yeah. And then they, when you swam with them, or you snorkeled with them, or even, I'm not sure if Marie had a bottle on the back of her, but you know, you know, dived with them. Um, and that's what made it very special. Yeah. That, that was a fantastic That was one. cool, really cool. We sailed on through Bora Bora, and we went to Tonga. Now, Tonga, you actually flew, flew back home, so I think you, again, you were go going back to do uh, some commentary for the beat and we were anchored in Tonga myself and Audrey were on the boat uh, on lush on our own I always remember this satellite phone call and it was you Eddie and you go hang on Paolo let me get this right you're on my yacht in the South Pacific swanning around and I'm paying you for this look um, the thing is that <clears throat> what I think and this would be a recommendation to other people um, some people might want to think that they do it themselves. If you're going to enjoy it to the maximum, yes, of course, there's nothing like the free spirit and sailing, but you can do that, and you can do your watches, and you can do your normal thing that you would do as a yacht man, yacht person. Um, but having crew makes it so, so much more enjoyable. You know, you don't have to. They can drop you ashore. They pick sure. you up, and they can do things. Uh, yes, I'm sure to some people it may sound lavish, but actually it's not lavish. It's about comfort, and it's about being able to get what you want out of the trip to be its maximum. And um, I think in terms of maintenance and just general control of the boat as well, you need to have a good relationship and a good life with the person who's responsible for the boat. 
Indonesia was very special. The people were amazingly kind. It was a surprise. I, I, I didn't really fully understand how great Indonesia was. Africa has such a lot to offer. The little jewel at the end of the, the trip is Cape Town.